Florida Mayhem and the LA Valiant will go up against each other today. And this is one of those matchups which does have a lot of standing implications, not just for the season, but also, of course, for the summer showdown. Uh, the Mayhem and Kearney on a six match winning streak, and they are coming off of uh, being from a second place finish in the uh, Mamie Lee. Costa, do you feel the Valiant can stop them? And I fear you're going to say yes. Okay, here's. Everyone remember. <laughs> that coming into this season, nobody believed in the Valiant. Nobody believed in me okay, and my trust okay. in the team. And look at me okay. now, okay? I'm right with power. No, like, you have to look at this team and they've <laughs> exceeded all expectations. And it has to go to the scouting and the performance of the coaching staff of the Valiant. We have Shax and KSP putting on an absolute clinic as of late. Look at Shax's numbers for a, like a middle of the table team it's just absolutely ridiculous. Knowing how many good players there have been on Tracer, he's putting up ridiculous numbers. Then we have KSP, on the other hand, on the hit scan, who's just, I don't know, he doesn't seem to miss. When you watch him playing, it feels like you're watching a robot. So it's just really cool to mm. see these two players synergize, especially in this meta. With that said, though, if I was going to see another duo that is completely perfect for this situation, it would be BQB and Yaki. So I'm just super excited for these matchups. Yeah, I mean, this matchup is just going to be a treat because then you have KSP and Shax and they're going up against BQB and Yaki. And this is another damage duo that has been so on point for the Florida Mayhem, especially when they play these double shield compositions. And the stats speak for themselves as well when it comes to these two guys. BQB and Yaki, final blow to death ratio. They're up there in the top six, both of them. And I mean, the prof like, look at the names in that the column, yeah. like Carpe, Striker, Nene, Hisu, Flat Avoid. Like... The and Florida Bayam has two of them in there. It's uh, it's unbelievable. And I mean, I took a look at Yaki and how he plays this tracer as well in the May Melee tournament. And it's a very disciplined and fundamentally good approach to the game. I watched a lot of Yaki's tracer, and he, he likes to sit back in the back line and just sort of execute people that are low. He takes them down when BQB has dealt a lot of the damage already, and they just don't overextend that they don't go too aggressive. So I think th this damage duo is one to keep your eye on because I think they will continue to perform and improve the rest of the season and they could honestly be one of the best damage duos in the league uh, towards the later half of the season. So keep an eye on these boys. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a super excited DPS matchup in that uh, very uh, series. And the last one of the day will be fought out between the Washington Justice and the San Francisco Shock. Now, Justice with their two new edition of Janu as well as Stitch um, haven't really shown us too much improvement uh, ever since they joined. They also made some changes to their coaching staff. I think they promoted Supreme to head coach in order to, uh, you know, try and salvage <laughs> their season. But... Oh, Today, it's not going to be easy for them. <laughs> Do you guys feel like they can turn things around with these changes? Um, I mean, it, it, they are going up against the San Francisco shop, uh, Zoe. So that's obviously something you have to keep in mind uh, as my microphone just fell off my stand. But it's okay because I'm going to hold it. Didn't even uh, hear it. <laughs> they didn't even hear it. So the Washington Justice, this is not really the match you want. Uh, when you want to turn things around in a way so i'm just happy if they showcase some highlights you know that stitch is now back in the lineup uh we know as well that jano is in this lineup and we know that they're individually skilled right so this is a bit of a proving ground for the rest of the season for the washington justice so uh, i'm looking forward to see what stitch can bring to the table uh this is how my mic is currently i'm currently holding it uh, but it's all good uh, <laughs> we're doing a great job here you know we got the home setups ready to go and we're ready to watch them overwatch good times <laughs> You're doing great. Oh, that, that's that's great. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I, you've completely lost me, Johnny. I, I, I wanted to talk about al Alarm. Uh, sorry, not Alarm. You've absolutely thrown me uh, through the loop. Aim I want to talk about Aim God. There sorry. He, because he's sorry. a player that we've, we've thought about for, since Season 1 as a great mechanical player. He's always putting in so much work. He's third on hero damage and first on healing down, which on the team that he has been playing, Washington Justice, who's 3-11, and 11, is really impressive to see. But you can see on his assist that he's not really working with the team and collaborating with them to get value. And that's sort of been the story of his career, is he's a great mechanically and he's always making these crazy plays individually, but as a team, he hasn't really stepped up. He has a lot of great players around him. He has a good coaching staff around him. I want to see the change, the style adjust. You even see it here. He like runs into the back line <laughs> of the team he's playing against and then uses transcendence. Like I want to see more cohesion and coordination from this Justice team because they're not lacking mechanical skill. They're just lacking that cohesion. Dude, his name is Aim God. Like, what do you expect? <laughs> You're expecting I mean, his that, name that is, is setting expectations. <laughs> 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 that 
That's like when you join the lobby and you see a player name like that. You're like, oh, great. This is going to be a oh, really yeah, good cohesive <laughs> game. Um, speaking of cohesive games and good games, most of all, San Francisco Shock. Uh, now, i got to be real with you. They look terrifying, scary. And I mean it in a, in a good way. But they, uh, is there any stopping them now with Twilight in there as well? They're just hogging talent left and right. What can anyone do really to take them down? <laughs> I was oh, going to yeah. give the Golden State reference again. But I don't think we can do it because I think we have to kill no more, that no reference. No more meat sports references on, no on more broadcast. At least for the weekend, references. okay? Yeah. Okay, let, let, me, let me list this for you, okay? Arns, Striker, Choi Hyobin, Smurf, Twilight, Violet. Okay, no, I'm not naming the best people in their roles. That's literally their roster. <laughs> and you put them all together, especially after the performance that you saw from Twilight on that Baptiste. It's impossible to think that this team could lose in this meta. They actually have some of the best individually, mechanically talented players. But then you put the cohesion that the San Francisco Shock and the coaching that they have... I don't see anyone really getting close to this team, and I hope a team proves me wrong, but I expect them to dominate through this summer showdown unless some team really steps it up. Yeah, and I love a point that Hex made uh, yesterday, actually, that it might just be the case with the addition of Twilight that the San Francisco Shock has the two best Batistes in the league. And I'm not even <laughs> kidding. You have Violet and you have Twilight. So we can take a look at the stats themselves. And I think in this scenario, I think that Violet has more healing done per 10 and more damage done per 10, specifically because he's played against more Brawl and more double shield composition. So Twilight doesn't have the numbers, but Twilight played against uh, Sparkle and Paris Eternal Genji compositions and you saw how lethal he was with those final blows when he played against those weaker compositions so very much rocking the improved <laughs> soldier 76 that, tweet. that was such a good tweet from Bonnie <laughs> great uh, writer as well by the way but yeah this one uh, this one got me thank you Bonnie thank you <laughs> this one hits different yeah this one really does uh, yeah what I, I don't even I don't even know what to say about the San Francisco Shock. Again, it's one of those teams like I can't see a crack in the armor. I have no idea how to stop them. And I just assume neither do the other teams. But, you know, uh, we can be surprised. We want to be surprised. Let's put it that way. Tall order for the Washington Justice to go up against in our last match of the day. But now, before we starting the matches, it is time for Emote Control presented by State Farm. Emote and uh, we have some... Control. Nice. We have a, a, a jingle now, uh, always sung by Costa. Um, I'm going to add my ukulele next time as well. <laughs> uh, it's going to be great. Uh, we're starting off with a... I don't even know what to call this. Striker pulls bombing the floor. Uh, definitely put that one in his place, but I... <laughs> The, the fact that we're making fun of me, uh, fun of this, makes me feel very attacked because I do this 50% of the time. Because it's very obvious that he tried to blink forward and then blink back super fast. Traces do it very quickly and very well at the yeah. top level. This is my face and this is his face when he did this because it's the worst feeling because you just sit it. You just watch it as it slowly blows Wait, up. So it, the police? Really? <laughs> yes. I can. I, I will not stand for such a mistake. Uh, Whoa. You know. I will not. Wow. No, Whoa. So, that is okay. so, he's, so he's coming for Striker. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I'm out there to get him. All right. Well. You got Potato Josh. Why? Why? Because it was a sideshow play. <laughs> was there <laughs> any <laughs> questions <laughs> here? Well, I don't know. All right. So uh, our, our next one is uh, another Ooh. great uh, Sparkle play. What a what a fantastic uh, deflect here. Oof. Yeah, it's, that's it's tasty. Great to see. I love to see it. Yeah. I'm wondering if Arns forgot that Genji existed and can reflect bullets back. Because it's been so long that I'm sure he's played against the, <laughs> a, a Genji that he, it, this was unexpected. They're you just used to clicking on heads. Yeah, I mean, it, that that is one of the most satisfying things to do as well in Overwatch. Is like when you're playing Genji and you get that reflect in. So, I mean, that was a tasty moment. I went with the Stratos face. Uh, same. Same it's, it's, here. Yeah, uh, very exciting stuff. It's a yeah, we got very excited when we saw it, and then we rewatched it about 20 or 30 times. Or I did, I don't know, I shouldn't speak for <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I got a lot That's out of this play, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Look, if, if I'm committed to something, I'm definitely committed to something. Uh, now, uh, this, one was, this one was just really, really freaking funny. Uh, Outlaws pull a big bamboozle against the Gladiators, announcing it in chat at the end as well. Uh, so they, they had fun with it. Their boozle. game yesterday was, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun to watch. Uh, they had fun playing it. And hydration out there. Uh, you know, bringing the heat. What are you doing, Zoe? Was, was you can just hear you in the background <laughs> echoing. Just, just shuffling, shuffling everything around. Yeah, shuffling, shuffling through silence. my emotes. <laughs> 
The, the cr I want to know who came up with their strategy. Who's like, okay, we're going to put a wall on this really weird fire hydrant, then we're going to put a teleporter on top of it, and then we're going to break the wall and then jump on the tele- Like, so I don't know who coordinated this, but that was a genius play. I don't think we've ever seen anything of that complex, at so least. So why the police? Because it's not allowed. They, they, they oh. abuse like three <laughs> different bugs in that thing. They put a wall on a fire hydrant. That's just not allowed. Not a bug if it's in-game. That's <laughs> <laughs> my rule. I went with the uh, the Mitch face because he's kind of like very impressed and like confused how it happened. But there's also <laughs> a golden shirt because it was a golden play. So I mean, th th there's many factors that go into this sign. Um, my my arm is getting really tired from holding my microphone up. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought you were gonna say it's getting tired from holding Mitch up, and I was like, you are weak because yeah, he's a I think he is bulky. I think Mitch <laughs> is bulky. That's okay. So that's fair. Your heart, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is not working. Uh, well, for me, that was an absolute money play, and I just love to see the Atlas having so much fun with it. And that concludes our uh, emote control presented by State Farm. So thanks again for participating once more. And it is now time for our predictions. Yep, that's right. Oh, our yeah. favorite time oh, of the yeah, day. Yeah. Looks like uh, the majority of the people went with Fusion. Got a few Boston fans in there. Mayhem also, of course, is getting okay. the majority okay. here. Uh, Costa doesn't agree with that. And that leads Absolutely me to believe not. that Costa indeed picked the Valiant. Oh, yeah. Did you? D of, of course I picked the Valiant. Oh, my God, you One did. One of these wow. of doesn't look did. like that. You guys think you're so <laughs> smart, Twitter. But when Valiant comes out, number one, don't come crawling back to me. I'm just saying, I'm warning you, you made the same prediction as Sideshow. Or oh, one last, one last lost. moment to change. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still stand by Valiant? Uh, yes, but I wish Josh just didn't like Valiant anymore. It was, it was better <laughs> that way. You know what, Costa? I like you making your decisions with your heart, not necessarily with your brain. Keep on at it. I think, I think that's the way to go. And uh, that's all I gotta say about that. And that's also all for our Watchpoint pre-show. So thank you so much for joining us. We will be back again for our first game break after the first two maps. So make sure to stick around for that. Now we're gonna get started with the Uprising and the Philadelphia Fusion. The Overwatch League is brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
Hey guys, welcome back. This is week number two, day number two of the Summer Showdown Qualifiers. My name is George, joined by Hex once again. We've got a few games coming up to you today. we got Philadelphia Fusion facing off against the Boston Uprising to start us off. Yeah, it could be a good one, should be a good one. Philadelphia, of course, at the top of the standings, but I mean, the Summer Showdown is such a cool format. We had the Me Melee. Summer Showdown is our next iteration of that exact same format. And not only can you win some cool cash money, but it's actually really important for some of these teams to get extra bonus wins. And, you know, sometimes the rich get richer, but if you take first, you get three extra wins, second, two, third, one. And then we're just going to put that on your overall score for the end of the year tournament that's going to be coming up. You can see how it is all shaken down thus far. Of course, we're pretty early into it. But things of note, Philly at the top, and I'm sorry, Dallas. Dallas at the bottom. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, we'll see if Philly can extend their lead today. Of course, they're looking for every win possible, right? Because they want to end up in first seeding over teams like Shock mm -hmm. and the Mayhem as well. So every win really does count. Speaking of map wins, Hex... Map number five has been kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of interesting between these two teams, especially looking at their history over the course of the league. Philadelphia Fusion and the Boston Uprising sitting quite high up in map five uh, win rates there. Yeah, we were actually just talking about this offline. We were like, oh, Philly seems like they always go to, to map five. And I was like, I think Boston does too. So we ran the stats and our producers put together this graphic for us. That, yeah, they lead the league in map fives outside of tournament play because tournament play gets wonky because sometimes it's best of sevens. You all understand that. But 20... Yeah, 28, 25, huge win rates too. Yeah, indeedy. Let's have a look what Fusion have to say about today's game. Obviously, our last uh, three games have gone to close map fives. Uh, obviously, we would have liked to win them all, um, but that's not the case. I think there's definitely a sense of added like um, pressure, and everyone's always a bit amped up, but. As the weeks have gone on, we've got a bit better at handling that. So I think going into this week, if we do end up going into a map five, we'll do even better with that and um, make sure we play like we just do in practice normally. Fusion staying confident. I like it. At the end of the day, if the team isn't doing so well, the best thing you can do is keep up the mental and uh, making sure you're bouncing back after every defeat. They've had a lot of close games recently, Hex. I yeah. will say that. Yeah, and, and also they're bringing in new players too, so some of that you know, old baggage of we can't win a map five might be going away. So, I mean, the, the roster starting out today is going to be a couple of those new players on the tank line. It's going to be Mikey and Punk, and I think if you were watching Watchpoint, the, the highest win rate on this team as far as team fights go is when Punk is playing. I believe it's a little shy of 48%. The DPS line is going to be Jerry and Color Hex, and then the supports are going to be Halo, and what, I think the best player on the team, Meongong, is going to round it out. Yeah, Mimmo is pretty insane. Fusion roster, though, you know him, you love him. Carpe and Hisu in the DPS slot. We're not seeing chips today. Well, maybe we will. I'm not entirely sure. We <laughs> you were the that biggest chips to stand. <laughs> it's funny, man. He's a hilarious guy. Sato and Fury on the tank line, and Mr. CEO and COO, Funny Astro and Alarm. Yeah, I mean, this this is the six that I think you're going to see run unless they want to run maybe a, a May into it. But we had the privilege of watching some of the best Batiste play in the world yesterday with the San Francisco Shock. Of course, they have Violet on the roster. Twilight came in. But Alarm, my Rookie of the Year candidate, has been crushing on Batiste as well. I mean, he has an argument for being the best North American Batiste uh, along with those guys. Yeah, Batiste... It's pretty good right now, some would say. I called him Better Soldier yesterday. I'm going to stand by that <laughs> statement, I'm going to be honest. We saw Twilight, obviously, in his uh, debut game with the shot, just demolish on the Baptiste. Wind without window or with window, it didn't really matter. Alarm up there at the top of the leaderboard in, in terms of damage, first place, and just so many other high places on the hero. So I can imagine we're going to see that. Let's jump into the maps, though. We've got Busan as our first one coming up today. A favorite of mine, apart from Mecha Base, because Mecha Base <laughs> does normally lead itself to double shield. We'll have to wait and see where we go to. Fusion, however, let's talk about their uh, DPS line, because regardless of chips are being out or in, Carpe and Hisu have just been so clean. Carpe has just turned it up another notch, I think, over the last couple of weeks. There's not really a player that's knocked him down a peg, and he's the most consistent high-performer DPS I think we've have in the league currently, and we have in Overwatch as well. But going up against Jerry, who's... 
team sometimes feels like it flounders around him. Jerry has been a definite standout performer on his own, yeah. but can he actually match up against Carpe? What time will tell? I mean, my biggest question uh, was talking about Boston is who's going to play the tracer for them. I mean, both Jerry and Colorex don't really stand out as like the tracer. And right now, if you don't have a tracer, you don't have a whole lot. I would imagine we're going to see a ton of tracer and ash today. And you'd have to think that Color Hex is going to be the guy on the tracer then going against Carpe. And I think if he can just check Carpe a little bit, I'm not looking for giant plays from Color Hex. Just make sure that Carpe can't run wild. And even if you're dueling and you feel you have to bail out of those duels just to keep Carpe honest i think that's a fair way to play the tracer if you're color hacks keep it on uh keeping carpe honest um, that's hard it's hard to I, do i think that's pretty tough yeah it looks like boss going to take the high ground for the time being i like philadelphia's position though i much prefer this when you're running double shields because you can have your dps kind of uh, slinking around over on the sidelines you can kind of see jerry taking pop shots at hisu in the distance carpe's got to be careful though discord orb and a body shot will Send you reeling if you are the Tracer versus the Ash. Dynamite is going to help finish off the Immortality Field as the point has been unlocked. Hisu still holding this high ground. This is why I like it, Hex, because they have to kind of run into Hisu. Unless they run a six, they're uh, going to have a bad time. No one has capped just yet, by the way. I feel like Hisu could definitely get onto the point and use Coach Gun to get away. But Jerry is keeping him check. And Carpe is just trying to distract him as much as possible and give Hisu the space. Finally, it's being taken. It sounds like it's being taken by Color Hex, and all the meanwhile, without Color Hex's output of damage, Myungmon does end up going down to Carpe as he now meets Color Hex on the field. Nashra ends up taking him out. So, in fact, Boston did make the earlier move there, but Fusion managed to take control. Yeah, ultra patient there from Philadelphia in the moment that they were down a player and they were capping a point. That's where Philadelphia made the move against Boston, able to get a couple of kills. Capping the point early is all good and that not, but you're not going to hold it real long when you lose people early and taking out the opposing Zenyatta is enormous. And it was so patient they were just chipping away, but taking out the other Zen means your shield crack is gone, your discord is gone, and eventually that's a fight that Philadelphia is going to win. Yeah, I find it quite interesting as well because you'd expect a team to rotate almost instantly when the point unlocks. I can imagine you see that in your solo queue, uh, queue games quite a lot. But Philadelphia knew in that situation that they weren't actually losing anything at all. They had a better position too. Pulse bomb from Color Hex goes a little bit wide. Landed on the floor between the two tanks. Didn't really find all too much damage. Doesn't mean he's not going to have that to pressure the back line now. Fusion now control the point. We know Double Shield is rather slow when it comes to actually setting up. Bob is going to get launched in by Philadelphia, but the issue is it's going to get taken out rather quickly. More of a space maker. Jerry's got his Bob coming online rather soon, however. Dynamite does get into an up, but a headshot will make sure he secures the ult. There's the slam back down into the ground as the Flux is let go by Fury. Mikey does end up going down, and that will be the Trace jumping on the point. Dynamite straight on Color Hex's feet, and that should be it for Boston. They're going to have to retreat and go again. Carpe now just cleaning up the stragglers. Yeah, very easy for Philadelphia there to get the kills. The Flux comes in, and Fury just got there a lot faster than Punk was able to get there. That's a product of winning the very first fight, is that the Sigma is able to pump in a little more damage and get to his Flux much earlier. Fury's been playing for Philadelphia about the last month or so. So, especially with D.Va out of it, I would imagine that Fury is going to be playing the Sigma for this squad going forward. Now it's 78%. Boston, it's time to hit Q. <gasps> Jerry doesn't see him. Jerry doesn't see him. Oh, he's going to get one clipped. Oh, no, no, no. Carpe does manage to find the kill onto Jerry so early. Flux is going to send Fury up in the air, but there's an Immortality field below him, so he's going to be more than safe with the healing and the defensive capabilities of the Baptiste. Boston, do you need to make a move? Copy with the Pulse Ball on the back line. Trying to force me on to use that uh, Transcendence, but a headshot will make sure he does let go of the recall fairly early. Point is still in Contestation. OT now ticking down. Supercharger did get laid out by Boston, but instantly taken care of by Fury. Boston do end up finding the flip, but is it actually going to stick? Philadelphia Fusion do have the high ground. He does end up going down. The Transcendence should just end the fight for the Boston Uprising. I say that as a Transcendence coming oh, in. A Carpe with a double Pulse Ball in the back. They weren't quite expecting that one. A post bomb as well is let go by Carla Hex. He takes down Funny Astro, but his team are bleeding. He needs to apply the bandages ASAP as Boston let go of the point. Fusion are going to jump on it. They should be able to secure it here with Halo and Punk coming back first. It's going to be a hard, tough fought battle to stay in this OT. I'm just going to yoink him off the point. Not even going to be able to touch there. Boston killed more immortality fields than they did players. Only two final blows there for the Boston Uprising. It was Jerry taking out his counterpart in Hisu and also Color Hex with a pulse bomb towards the end. But through the 
mostly until the last seconds of that fight, Boston hadn't killed anybody. You can have all the position in the world, you can capture point for free, but if you don't get any kills, I dare say it's going to be difficult to win a stage of Overwatch. Let's go to stage two of Busan. I think you like this one a little bit better, right? Oh, yeah. Because I get to see Carpe and Widow, maybe. Man, the sun's we'll out. See, we'll see. It should be the pulse bomb. Here we yeah. go. Yeah, so I want to see. I love the transcends coming out. Can't save you from the pulse bomb, unfortunately. Perfect halt. Perfect pulse bomb. Straight on the kneecap of Sigma, even. You see Halo trying to jump away as well. Just didn't quite get out of there in time. <laughs> so this is such a good map for... Ash, too. It's actually really interesting. Hisu is off of the Ash. He's going to play the McCree instead. So Jerry should have high ground pretty much uncontested. No one can really get up there. It was all about the fight in the ground. I mean, the uh, Philadelphia are actually taking a fight where that high ground actually means next to nothing. He's only really going to be able to poke away at Carpe, who's joining against Color Hex, but because Philadelphia Fusion are fighting on that Mega Pack, uh, Jerry can only really throw in the Dynamites. He's going to have to forego the high ground rather soon, I can imagine. Boss now rising, run a bit more of a dive-centric tank comp. They do have, of course, the Wrecking Ball. And Akape is dueling out on the point with Color Hex. He knows he doesn't have Blink left. He does steal the, uh, the mini health pack as well. Oh, no! But the Wrecking Ball is just behind him. That's so sad. They did end up losing someone at the start of the fight, though, Jerry. So Fusion are able to rotate to the point rather easily. Yeah, Carpe dies, but he forces a 2v1 that entire time, which means his team is in a much better odds fight up top. Boston seems to be prioritizing putting pressure on the point first. They had sent two down there. Carpe was able to deal with both of them, put a lot of damage on Mikey. Mikey had to leave and almost wins that duel, so it's fine that Carpe dies there. He did his job. He accounted for two people. That's an enormous advantage. Can't get over the, uh, the fact that we're seeing an Overwatch League player with the same name as my cat at home. <laughs> Aww. I your do miss my cats a lot. What's your cat's name, Mikey? Uh, yeah, Mikey. No, it's named Funny Astro, actually. Uh, just after Funny Astro. <laughs> You're yeah, a big enough fan <laughs> that I would not be surprised by it. <laughs> no, my parents would be like, wait, what? A funny what now? I'm like, no, don't <laughs> worry, Mum. He's a cool guy, I promise. He plays this character called Lucio. He goes fast. Yeah, there's nothing to really talk about on the map, so do you have any other cats? No? <laughs> no, uh, just kidding. Well, yeah, I got uh, one. Uh, <laughs> never mind, let's keep going, because they're not going to be able to push in without Myungong now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one I love seeing Zens as well, okay? I love pick offs of Zen. There's no better feeling in Overwatch, correct me if I'm wrong, than finding the other Zen with a fully charged right click across the map to stop yeah. the other team from moving in. It's, there's no better feeling. The sound as well. I think Bren talked about it and I talked about it a little bit a couple of weeks ago, but the sound design in Overwatch is just god tier. It's phenomenal. And it's, it, it's the best part of the game. Exactly. And it shows just through the Zen hitting headshot sound. Galax is getting forced out again, just completely outmatched by Carpe, mind you. And you can see how Carpe is playing defensively. He knows that Color Hex wants to get in a position, regardless yep. if he has Pulse Bomb or not, to try and pressure Alarm out. But Carpe is just waiting in the wings for it. Yeah, and they're in control. There's no reason for him to be pushing forward and trying to make a big play. They have to come to you. They get, Philadelphia is in control of the space, and they're in control of the economy. Five vaults. Uh, High noon on the side. Flux did come up. Can you find anything? There's a lot of skulls on his screen, but nothing much else. Boss not rising now, needs to get to the point. Pulls one from Carpe in the back line. Doesn't find anything but the immortality field, but it's good to pull down two bounce out. That'll be Mjongbon and Alarm being traded out, but Punk's in a very dangerous position up against a wall. But against three people, it doesn't seem to mind all too much. Carpe and Funny Astro fighting in this very small room. OT has been triggered. And Boss not rising, do you manage to find the flip? They don't really have many members left. Is in fact Jerry on the point alone. Now joined by Color Hex, Bob is going to join the fight as well as Color Hex ends up going down to Fury. Yeah, Fury's just going to farm the shield and then drop the shield in front of him. Bob can't do anything. Why was I programmed to feel pain? Oh man, I don't know. I feel sad for Bob, honestly. He was just trying to do his best. OT is here. Mikey gets taken out. This should just be it, really. Color Hex is trying to make his way back to the point. They got one post bomb and they got one window, and that's all that they do have. Punk gets a rock to the face, doesn't touch the point in the end, and the Philadelphia Fusion will take map number one. Kind of the results we expected. Boston needs to be a little more aggressive, in my opinion, but they were losing people on the entry, especially during stage two. But I mean, you look at stage one, they were just holding high ground, waiting for kills. They were killing immortality fields, but that's about it. To get only two kills on a stage is not boating very well. And that kind of went over into the second stage as well. They were trying to take high ground, but Philadelphia recognized that, decided to run a little more brawly, a little more close quarters comp with the McCree. And it seemed like Boston's like, I guess we'll put people on the point. Maybe that pulls people back, which is not a terrible idea, but they put two people on the point and only pulled one back. Philadelphia won that fight and never gave up control after that. 
I mean, it reminds me of Striker from yesterday, right? Where he was fighting on the point, just making sure the enemy team had to look his way as well. Mm -hmm. Force two people in for a rotation. And then your team's in a 5v4 and they just kind of roll over from there. We'll see if Boston can come back, though, if we do see that glorious map number five after this break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor. And by Zip Chair Game, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome back. This is Boston Uprising facing off against the Philadelphia Fusion. 1-0 right now for the Fusion. After that boss, uh, after that uh, Busan even, that was a rather quick and clean one. <laughs> but we have got it's a substitution. Like you get after the map and you're just like, well, that was a map. I mean, I think like that was the most that was a map map that has ever yeah. been that was a map. Yeah, you're right. Substitution. Fusion's going to come in. Fusion's. He's in. Mr. Reinhardt himself. Let's go. I want to see some Ryan. I want to see some... Z it's not going to happen. We're probably going to see a little bit more <laughs> double shield. Seems like a lot of uh, teams are a little bit more comfortable with that. Boston Uprising. They have still got Jerry in their back pocket. Will Jerry pop off against Carpe? I want to see the Widow duel. That's what, I've, yeah. that's what I'm casting for. And I've, uh, <laughs> I, I was promised a Widow. Please give me some Widow. Um, but we might see, obviously, a little bit of uh, McCree Tracer again. Because Carpe's Tracer there against Color Hex was just dominating. Like, Color Hex was... And I mentioned it in in the one of the, the final fights where Color Hex was going for these big flanks. Regardless of he had Pulse Mall Knight, he wants to be able to force out the cooldowns from the support so he can help his tanks. But Carpe was playing defensively, almost around mm -hmm. Hisu as well, who was playing the McCree, to make sure Color Hex couldn't do anything. As soon as he uh, forced the recall, Carpe knew he could just do whatever he pleased, Hex. Yeah, absolutely. And there's different styles to play, but there's also different styles of tanks. Like, so Fusions is coming in. They've added a couple new tanks to this Boston Uprising roster. See what Fusions had to say about that. Having Punk and Mikey on the roster has uh, enabled our growth a lot. Um, it's definitely been... They've both been really great additions to the team, and uh, week by week, we're getting better and better and continuing to grow with them. So um, it's filled out our hero pools a lot, um, and it's only positives to the team. So going forward, we're going to keep getting even better. 
Hey guys, welcome back. I can't help but laugh at the lobby chat. It's actually so funny. You can tell Carpe has been speaking to a lot of uh, a lot of our English players. Probably Astro, where he's learnt uh, some of this English slang. It's actually so funny. You guys just make stuff up. It's not even slang. I think it's, no, you, no, you no, say no. something and then you're like, oh no, oh. British people say that. And I'm like, no, that is not true. You're no. making that up. I can't no, verify it, but I know, you're, I know you're making it up. Yeah, but we, we the language. But, we, was, per uh, but we perfected it. Uh, I don't. I don't know about that one. I think. I think the the people who make up the languages, the Australians. Um, <laughs> Fair. Let's Fair. go to the maps. Junkertown is going to be our assault map. Not assault. Sorry. Uh, escort, escort map of the day. Yeah. We don't like uh, assault is on the brain for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. I had a game of Junkertown <laughs> yesterday. Not Junkertown. Sorry. Uh, Voskai Industries. And it didn't go well. So maybe that's still haunting me in the back of my head. I'm Clearly, sure. you, you have some issues to deal with. You, you you need a second. You need a couch. Lay down on. Yeah, maybe. Volskaya can, can be traumatizing. You just keep pushing in. Because first is. point's like easy to take, and then second point is like, now i got to do this for 10 minutes. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. What is here is Junkertown. Uh, a very, very unique map in a way that I think you, you almost always see different styles of play, even when the meta is established and we don't have hero pools. People kind of lock in stuff. We've seen uh, a lot of Bastion. If you remember, Pirate Ship was, was a thing for a while. Um, a lot of Roadhog. We had uh, support players, Zenyatta players, mostly flexing onto Roadhog on this map. But lately, it's been a sightline paradise. So I'd imagine we're going to see Carpe versus either Color Hex or Jerry. Now, Jerry has been like their hit scan ace for this team, but Color Hex had moments in season two when he was very first signed to the Boston Uprising roster where he would come out of spawn and just kind of make this really quick switch, get a couple picks with Widow. So he is more than capable of running it. And also, when Junkerton was first introduced, it was a lot of double sniper. Double sniper being Hanzo and Widow, and we saw a lot of that yesterday, and it does seem like that's what they're going to be running here today, Jaws. <laughs> yep. You're just reading chat, aren't you? Yeah, I'm reading <laughs> chat. Well, you're a funny man, Fusions. Carpe and Hisu on the double sniper. I really like double sniper on this map, and I really like... Uh, Hanzo with the Baptiste too, because Storm Arrows do a lot of damage, but through Window, it's just terrifying. Yeah. There is nothing more scary than s Storm Arrows versus a shield, especially someone like an Arisha shield, whose the, the health is fairly low, and uh, you're going to get instantly killed if you step in the way of that. It can be quite uh, quite troublesome to deal with. Look at the positioning from here, uh, from Fusion though, here, Hex. Yeah, they're taking a long time giving up a lot of ground, but then they're just going to collapse with the high ground on top, as long as they don't get halted off. Nice. He's doing a little bit of a surf there on top of the high ground. They do want to take this corner fight, where shield, uh, double shield does do best. Doesn't want to get spammed out too early. Double shield, of course, for the enemy side as well. I say enemy, of course, uh, I, am, I am impartial. Well, Carpe is going to go down. Yeah. Go it's time for Color Hex to clean up because now Carpe is out of the mix. Color Hex should be able to take a really long angle and get whatever he wants out of this without him to worry about the opposing Widow. Philadelphia is going to play really far back now. At some point, you got to come into this card. It's not going to be a fun yeah, experience. you got to touch. Jerry's doing so much work in the back. There we go. Alarm's going to go down as well. Vilga does fall, but I'm not sure it matters, to be honest. Alarm's going to provide so much uh, damage and like just helping damage out the, uh, the tanks. It doesn't really matter all too much now. Halahex falling is maybe a little bit of a problem. Carpe's actually jumped back onto the trace. He hasn't got recall available, but it doesn't matter at all as Jerry ends up going down on the sidelines. Everybody was split from the Boston Uprising. Both the tanks are trying to stay alive on the point. But with Carpe jumping back onto the trace, so he can just be such a menace. At that point, you don't want to jump onto the Widow because you're not going to be able to set up on sidelines very well. Yep. So jumping onto the tracer and just making sure you can deal with uh, a Hanzo is is key. And that's exactly what uh, Carpe did. And that's why uh, Philadelphia backed off so much, is to buy time. And it's actually one of those things that's really difficult for the attacking teams because you want to keep pushing. But you, in the back of your head, you know that Carpe is respawning. Is he coming back on Tracer or Widow? Either is going to be a problem if you're not paying attention for him and he was able to stay alive even though he was getting hunted down gets a couple of kills and Philadelphia stabilizes at the last second there although we could have a Holt Dragon coming in now Boston did get a lot done there and they do have the ultimate advantage oh Carpe in a danger I had to recall yeah Colex you know Chase about had to recall like in the middle of the map out of nowhere uh and that transcendence is going to help them just move towards the payload I'm kind of questioning what Fusion are doing right now they're all split. They tried to go for this really aggressive flank around, but now Boston are able to set up on the cart with uh, the window. And the Flux is also going to just send Sato high in the sky. Gonna get, Luckily, he had his shift point. available, but it doesn't matter at all. He was so slow. And not only that, was also lifted up into the air just to complete out-rotation. 
from the Boston Uprising, Philadelphia Fusion. Yes, their aggression can sometimes be unmatched, but a little bit unnerved there, I must say. And Boston Uprising managed to get the cap. And it's not all terrible for Philadelphia because they were able to win that fight, which means, like, a lot of these points, escorts um, comes to mind, especially, like, you think of Gibraltar, too. Losing the second fight is terrible because that means that the offense can set up on high ground and take away most of the second point. Right now, Philadelphia won that uh, previous fight, so they're able to take high ground, which means you get two fights on second rather than just the one. So it's it's nice that they won that, but you would like to have someone on the cart there because Philadelphia, in theory, should still be holding on to first right now. Another flank for Boston. That's a beautiful stick by Color Hex. Both supports are going to go down. Oh, it's almost perfect. Now they just need to push on and look at the time bank too. Going into large point of Junker down could be so devastating. Halo does end up falling though to Hisu. And a little bit of revenge, but it should be just the cleanup. There's no real problems here. It's such a hard point as well, Hex, to actually recontest because it's very small choke points you actually have to get around and against double shield and against someone like Jerry as well who has the dynamite which does so much work it it's almost impossible and in fact I don't think they're even going to be able to touch Carpe is here with the pulse bomb he's going to be able to contest for a long time manages oh. to get the stick as well how he threw that from like a mile away one support now down and uh, a Carpe is eventually dealt with but it did lead Fusion to actually get back onto the point he's stalling out for some additional time no more picks we're acquired three minutes and 39 for the last phase. <laughs> how many sticks have we seen in the last couple of days? We're like, how did that hit? That's, that nice, one, like that one made no sense to me at all. Uh, I'm going to drop it. an all-time high, mind you, as well. Yeah, it's. I think there is a worry here if you're a Philadelphia fan that Philadelphia might be a little overconfident, maybe looking past Boston a little bit. I mean, look at the records. 14-1 in the regular season, 2-11. Um, Boston's two wins are over the Gladiators last week at Houston before that, but I think this is a Boston team closer to a team that's beating the Gladiators than the one that only beat Houston, um, so they have to be a little bit careful. The Gladiators are on an upswing here, and you can't look past any team in the league. Ooh. <laughs> Discord all one Halo and Carpe goes for the half a clip. Easy as that. Boss not rising a force and now back off. That's all you need. Take care of the Baptiste and you will be fine. Nice little reset, but they do have a lot of time in their bank, plus a few ultimates to kind of deal with what Fusion are bringing to the table as well. They used their dragons earlier on, Hex. I want to quickly dip back to that. That was a bit of an interesting use. I mean, Punk was off on the high ground, but the dragons weren't going to really do anything. Holt was combined with it, but... Hulk was able to jump down so fast. Hulk nice halt. Flux. Immortality Field is out. Halo and Punk have been saved for the time being. That window did actually stop Fusion from running into them as well. Yeah, that that's the issue. Off, so that's actually not bad at all. However, that Hulk was pretty good. Straight into a few Storm Arrows. Headshot to Fusion. Doesn't matter how much healing you got, that's still going to do a bazillion damage. He's on the high ground too, just being an absolute menace. Jerry falls. Me and one Halo fall after them as well. Another nice little fight for the fusion. Uh, they've swung the economy in their way too because they forced out the transcendence from Youngbong and now Alarm is going to have his transcendence, likely going to keep it in his pocket for when his team inevitably gets fluxed up in the air. Uh, Punk is going to be trying to work on that one, but Junkertown's a long map and though Boston has been getting the objectives and winning some fights, there's still only 90 seconds left. And he's so quick on the immortality field. That pulse bomb would have been so sick. But it only takes it out. Although it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, now yet you can do something like this. No one wants to be able to save you now. There's Punk. He's gone. Just erased. And in fact, Carpe has managed to split the team entirely as well. Punk falls to Funny Astro. And Carpe still in the back line. Uh, as, <laughs> as he likes to be. They can't really do anything about him, it seems. I mean, so much of Overwatch right now in the current meta is just getting abilities out of the other team and then capitalizing on it. Of course, the, the big one is uh, the Immortality Field. If you can force it out with a Pulse Bomb, I almost consider that a win for the Tracer, given how fast Pulse Bomb charges and how important Immortality Field is in these fights. And you're seeing the best teams bait out fields early with just basic abilities and then capitalize on the team's lack of staying power. Resistance up on the high ground. Not a bad play to actually force Fusion down to the low ground. Bob into the back line as well onto Spawn. I'm not sure. I, well, Bob has high ground. He's going to die fairly fast. Yeah. Dragons on the high ground too. Forces Jerry down. I don't know about that. I feel like these dragons could be better suited to just halt dragoning people, but then force things out for then Carpe to go in with the Pulse Bomb or just one clear. Beautiful halt though 
onto Hisu. Dynamite's follow up. Fusion just finds the kill. And now Jerry can set up on the high ground. He only has fears one thing, and it is Carpe right now. Transcendence is going to keep people alive through that flux. That Pulse Bomb doing so much damage. Straight on top of the Dynamite as well. Somehow Sado is still alive. Finally, Color X finishes him off. A beautiful rock actually stopping the flux too. Fusion are getting dismantled right now by the boss not rising. Perfect ult economy, but Carpe sticks to wall, manages to take out Punk. One tank now down. They're relying on fusions to keep this team fight alive. And Carpe is still doing work in the back line. You can see him on the mega health pack. Sado comes back on the wrecking ball, flattens Halo. A transcendence now to try and keep them alive in overtime. But he soon has jumped onto the widow. No healing will save you now, Jerry. As OT will tick down in a matter of seconds if they don't touch the payload. Punk ends up falling and fusion are going to be able to hold just before the third point. It's a defender's advantage. It very, very much feels like an assault map that if you get one kill on the defense and you're not really on the brink of getting the cart pushed in, that your team has a chance to bring it back. And you always have a chance to come back when you have Carpe there. And then with, without some of the healing up there, getting that one kill, all the other targets get low, and that's Tracer's playground. Low targets, you don't even have to use a full clip on somebody. Feels really good. So Philadelphia gave up a ton of ground there early. Boston, I think, was really nice. They, they played aggressive. They had some good individual plays there. They focused on the objective. The first point, you mentioned it, the out rotation, just to capture first point without even winning the fight. They lost that fight, by the way. They lost the fight after they captured the point, but Boston playing smart, using what they have. Philadelphia still has a chance to win Junkertown and go up 2-0, though, if they simply complete the map. Although no small task when it comes to Junker Tom. Right, this is your weekly ranked tip, okay? If you have a tracer on your team or anybody that can kind of kill the back line, Doom Fisk, NG, whatever, Attackers please call out Immortality Field. Call out Shift on Baptiste is also fairly big. Um, if you can call that out. Yeah, but it's a self healing, but Immortality I mean, Field is so, like if you call that out, you will just win fights if your tracer is good enough. Like you can the, the ranks you can climb by just calling out <laughs> abilities is pretty strong. Yeah, so, communication uh, takes, is key. E exactly. Even if you call out one thing during the game, but it managed you manage to win a fight, hey, it was worth calling out that one thing. You know? Immortality field, in my opinion, is more important than his ultimate. I mean, it's what, is a 20-something cooldown? Like, yeah. it's a ridiculous cooldown for an ability, and I think it's more valuable than his ultimate ability. But yeah, I completely agree. Immortality field is a huge thing to call. Even calling halts is nice sometimes, yeah. but you don't want to over. Oh, very good too. You don't want to overload your uh, comms depending on what level. No, you're I, at, I literally call every ability. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those people. Hanzo shot an arrow. Hanzo shot a second arrow. Yeah. Two arrows no in. No storm arrow. I'm actually, I actually say no storm arrow. I'm not even kidding. I'm like, no storm arrows. <laughs> we can pl replant shields, which is actually fairly important as well. To be fair, it's like a really micro thing if your tanks know what they're doing. But um, sometimes not the case. Unlike oh. That's my boy! <laughs> Alarm on the Zen, right clicking the Widowmaker. That's what I love to see. So you said you said well. firing off a Zen with a volley is the best feeling. Oh, I disagree. Like getting yes. a widow with Zen is like pretty yeah. tough. Tier. I will scream obscenities in my apartment when that happens. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't got a noise complaint yet, X. That's uh, not like to ourselves. <laughs> Right, what's happening here? Well, Alarm kills another one. There you go, both TPS dead. Alarm was probably one of the uh, biggest acquisitions by Fusions by a mile. Alarm was going to make it to the Overwatch League at some point, and it was going to be on a team like Fusion. It's The guy is an absolute nutcase. Carpe is going to clean up the rest of the fight, with Pisu also taking a very nasty angle and a nasty flick on Kalex's body as well. Oh, cut! come on, Carpe. Yeah, but Already I mean with the ZZ. <coughs> But losing two of anything, I've always said this in Overwatch, especially in 2-2-2 now, losing two of anything is just terrible. Losing both your tanks, both of your supports, or both your DPS. When both of the DPS are down for Boston Uprising, Carpe and Hisu just start like walking in on tanks. They just, they forget the shields, they don't care, they just go right after it because there's no one to stop them. They don't have to worry about sight lines, they don't have to worry about storm arrow, and it's just super easy. Philadelphia walks right in. We're not even in the ultimate phase of the game yet. Philadelphia coming online with about six, and they're in a good spot. Not a great uh, upper ground advantage right now for Boston, and Philadelphia continues to push forward. A lot of ults available to them as well. Dragon Strike on the high ground, not combined with a halt this time. Maybe trying to force out an immortality deal, but... I think the Hulk did go in, but it, it didn't grab the Sigma. Also may have got eaten by the Sigma as well. Yeah, I think that, that, that may have happened. Quite have the angle. There's a lot of ults used by the Fusion. They use, also use the Flux in that engagement. Immortality field now burn. Now Carpe can maybe open up on something. They know it's down, as Hisu did manage to kill it, so Carpe is going to be able to set up with a Pulse Bomb. 
flux coming up. There's an easy transcendence timing there for Alarm. And actually that got cancelled as well. You saw everybody kind of float back down. I'm not entirely sure who cancelled it, but it could have just been a rock. Carpe now setting up for another pulse bomb. Immortality Field will be up and available here at a moment's oh, notice. Oh, 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 oh. Punk just got oh, punked. He got dude, hunted, they, he got accreted, and then Carpe's there to finish him off. They're splitting up. Not splitting up. Fight is six. Oh, and Halo gets grabbed off the map as well. Nice little shot by Jerry, but he's cleans him up. Easy peasy. And now Fusion's in a, a very odd situation between two DPS and then the other tanks on the low ground. Another very, very fast team fight for the Fusion as they do cap second point. Yeah, they're flying through this. They're going to get even more time. Four and a half on the He's clock. so good. Yeah, Philadelphia's defense wasn't looking perfect, but this offense is looking clean, clean, clean. A little banter going on in the chat between these two squads. Oh, I mean, dear it, me. It may not affect the teams, but this is kind of a regional rivalry as well. These two teams close to each other uh, on the East Coast. Some some sports rivalries as well. Patriots, Eagles. Eagles won that Super Bowl, by the way, just to let you guys know. Um, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, if, if you're a fan, you if you're a Philadelphia fan, you want to beat Boston. You want to beat the Bruins if you're the Flyers. Like, it, it might not matter to these teams, but it matters to the fan bases. You see how quickly they're back away from window. They're just going to wait this out. You've got so much time. Four minutes in the time bank. Attempted to hold to dragons. He still kills Halo. I thought he was dropping him. I thought he was out the hitbox there, but... Jerry does manage to kill off Hisu. And now they're in a good position. You remember when uh, Hisu was on the high ground? This is now Jerry's playground. Got to watch out for Carpe, though. But he's still trying to ding him in the body. Try and force a recall. Doesn't quite find him. And they are going to back off. Remember, a lot of time still available to them. Plenty of time to go. That was about a minute burned off the clock there. Now let's take a look at what the ultimates look like for this squad. Pulse Bomb's about ready for both sides. And differing support ultimates. Funny, Astro can maybe buy some space with the window, maybe put it down in the high ground, maybe even pick Boston from the high ground. Ooh, Lux went off somewhere. Guys. Yeah, it didn't really result in anything. You can see Membong go pretty low. Bobby won though, can't like Carpe. Carpe has control of the next pack. There's the Flux on Halo. No one field. Goodbye. It actually went down, but he actually got killed before it actually landed. A transcend is a little bit late. Stick in the back there for Color Hex. Can they actually finish off the fight though? No, because Sado goes golden. Damage resists, plus all the healing getting pumped into him. And meanwhile, Carpe does a little bit of something extra in the back line. Beyond World does go down to the Pulse Bomb. Color Hex also falls, and now Boss not rising. I forced all the way back to their spawn. Punk's going to have a tough time just regrouping with the rest of his team. And someone needs to have to touch too. Fusion jumps over to the ball. Try and get the spin to win around the payload. Trying to let it rip, but he's not quite getting there. 1v1 on one of the high ground between Hisu and Jerry. Hisu comes out on top yet again. There's a fusion. There are only a couple of meters now remaining before they end up well, they got one kill. match point in the series. They, they got, got one. one kill, but yeah. Carpe is just cleaning house here, Hex. There's no way they're going to be able to touch now. Everybody holds it back. And the fusion now on match point in the series. Well, Boston's offense looked okay, but I think Philadelphia has the, the right idea about this map, and we've seen it throughout the season of teams uh, very forward holding. I think Paris very forward held the Gladiators once on this, that if you can just slow a team down a couple of times uh, on the offense and just win a few fights, slow them down, that you give your offense a chance to burn through. Conversely, if you have a really fast offense, then all you're doing is trying to force fights because Junkertown's such a long map, you have to be clean on it. So Philadelphia's defense was mostly about just slowing down the onslaught of the offense. They were able to take a couple fights on second, a couple fights on first, and then their offense simply blew through the other team alarm with a standout play. I mean, whenever we talk about Philly and we cast Philly, we get the producers saying, like, who's your player of the match? I'm like, pick one. Just just pick one. It doesn't uh, matter. Like, like, it's pretty easy to pick any player from Philadelphia. Yeah, very, very easy. I know you can't see the stat cards at the end there, but funny, Astro had 45% of his uh, team's damage taken as, as healing, which is ridiculous. We know Baptiste, obviously, very strong hero, but that is absurd. Philadelphia Fusion now on match point. Point. Can Boston make it to that elusive map number five? We'll have to wait and see. So to play for, we'll jump onto Blizzard World next. We'll see you in a bit. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
Welcome to our Game Break presented by Cheesy Grooves. Zoe here joined by Costa and Reinforce. And currently we are having the Philadelphia Fusion leading this series 2-0. Two, two and now that is pretty much what we expected. What we also mentioned coming into this match was that Boston Uprising have been looking improved and they continue to do so not so much on Busan uh, I think uh, they didn't have quite as many highlight worthy moments but definitely on Junkertown we saw them uh, playing really well uh, not well enough uh, unfortunately to actually take down the Philadelphia Fusion but they are looking good so let's dissect the match starting on Busan what are the thoughts yeah I think the Boston Uprising have a really interesting uh idea on how they want to play. They have Mikey coming in to pretty much play the Arissa and they're just playing the double shield mirror, which I actually like, and they're actually showing some good looks on it. Uh, Color Hex is holding his own, sort of, against Kai. It, honestly, I can't even say individually. I think everyone's sort of holding their own. They're just getting a little bit of outclassed by the Philadelphia Fusion, which is to be expected because we said going into this match, they are absolutely stacked. So, I don't think this is a, a bad match for Boston this far. It's just a few things are going by the wayside for them here and there. Yeah, I kind of agree with that as well. I think that Boston keeps having pretty good performances, and I don't think the scoreline is necessarily indicative of the teamwork we're seeing and the fairly good ultimate usage we're seeing from the Boston Uprising. Philadelphia Fusion have been slacking a little bit. I mean, they're a bit unpolished at times, on questionable ultimates, but they know that they're going to win this match, and you can see the confidence in their play, and you can see the individual skill really come out from the Philadelphia Fusion and see them flourish. I mean, we see Carpe on this Tracer just pop off. We see Alarm multiple times just getting picks with the Senyara, opening picks with Senyara, and then as well Carpe, as I mentioned. I mean, just look at the stats from Carpe this match. 10 final blows per deaths. 10 minutes, 1.4 deaths <sighs> per 10 minutes. What? That's ludicrous! <laughs> 20 eliminations per 10 minutes! I mean, the statistics are unbelievable for Carpe. So, like, Boston Uprising, yeah, you're playing a pretty decent game, you know, you got the fundamentals going, but then you face Carpe and Alarm, and they're just picking you apart with confidence, and it's so scary, and that's why the Philadelphia Fusion are up 2-0 uh, going into the game break. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to see Carpe switching over to that Tracer while starting on the Widow uh, on uh, Junkertown, but then they figured, you know what, if Alarm can just snipe as a Zen, why do we need a Widowmaker? <laughs> that is <easy>. <laughs> <laughs> Big brain. But, uh, yeah, no, jokes aside, obviously Philadelphia Fusion are playing in a, in a very high class and it is hard for the Boston Uprising to really, you know... Um, stack up against that however they did have individual great moments which we do want to highlight and one of them made it into our crunch time presented by cheesy grooves uh what you guys got for us uh, I, I really wanted to highlight this pulse bomb by Color Hex, and we saw it a little bit in the B-roll as well. It's actually showing the coordination that we're seeing between this Boston squad that we didn't see in the past. So this is Color Hex coordinating with the Orisa. He goes up the stairs and then drops this pulse bomb. And what this pulse bomb does, because of the pull, it ends up pulling everyone out of the field and, you know, killing the entire team, which is really impressive. This is not the clip that uh, we were hoping for, but, you know, we're going to run with it. You saw it in the B-roll. <laughs> it's, it's really cool to see how they've sort of adjusted as time has gone on with this team because honestly I had lost all hope for this team but they're, they're showing that they actually have good looks. There was great individual plays across the board as well. Punk knocked uh, down a couple of uh, Sigma ults with accretions and just, you know, we have Jerry doing Jerry things. I'm, I'm so excited for this team and I want to see how they stack up against these middle of the table teams because it feels like we're always just watching them go against these top teams lately. Yeah, but I there is a, there is a, a real chance if Philly doesn't clean up their play uh, now in the second half, there are definitely openings for the Boston Uprising to maybe uh, snack a map or even two because quite frankly, their old usage was not clean at all. They they just kind of yeeted it out there whenever it was ready at times and, and they just playing a little sloppy might be the confidence as you mentioned reinforced because they do feel like they're going to win this anyway so uh however that could actually maybe haunt them we're heading into a blizzard world next costa what do you want to see from them i i, I just want to see more of these plays i want to uh, want them to play clean because as you said philadelphia is not playing perfect and if they just keep and they string them together they can win them uh, win a map and they can take a couple of maps and that would be a big deal for this roster i'm sure so they got close on junker town busan wasn't as close but if they just keep running with it keep playing their strategy i want to see them try and get a map reinforce uh, we have ivy coming in for hisu what does that tell you well, that probably tells me that we're going to see some May. What do you think? Because yeah. that, that yeah. seems very likely when you have Hisu playing more of the hitscan heroes and then you have Ivy coming in for his May that he's been so brilliant on. So 
Uh, you know, with Splintered World, we might see some more double shield compositions. Uh, everyone loves it. Rejoice. Rejoice indeed. And for all the rejoicing, we're handing it back over to Joss <laughs> and Hex for this second half. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheese It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch. The Overwatch League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. And by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Side of the corner as well, Hex, they can't do anything about it. Plus it at least finds <laughs> one, but Astro with the boot! Stay alive for now, don't put the fighting as hard as that. Oh, him, almost low copy, almost gets deleted, but no. Alarm and Hisu are gonna be there, that's gonna be it. Gets an arrow boost, the Death Blossom is ready. Jerry, is it gonna be big? Takes down three, Jerry! Off the flank, Boston, still in it. Welcome back, this is the Philadelphia Fusion up against the Boston Uprising. We're about to jump into a Blizzard World, third map of the set, Hex and Fusion currently a 2-0. We did have a quick stat at the start of this series about the uh, map 5 win percent, and both Boston and Philadelphia are 
pretty high in that scale, actually. Yeah. Over 60%, near 80% for Philadelphia Fusion. And Boston Uprising, over the last couple of uh, games they've actually had, and they've played, they've been doing pretty well, especially in these map five, like, close series. Their pr the pressure has not really gotten to them, and Fusion has said in the uh, in, in the small piece we had before as well, that they have been kind of preparing for this, and their mental is... Uh, gotten a lot better in this in those kind of situations. I wonder if we're actually going to make it there first. Fusion, of course, a rather tough team to actually bring to in a map five, but it will start here if they're going to do it. Yeah, and but for Philadelphia, this is the the next step I've wanted to see them take for a little bit. And I think I talked about this maybe last time I, I cast them. Of course, Boston has gone to five. They went to five against Paris. Uh, they beat the Gladiators in five. But Philadelphia is a team that, if they are going to be considered a top team, need to stop letting uh, teams back into it. And it's been an issue with Philadelphia since the inception of the franchise that they go to five a lot, but those are games that they should not have been going to five. And I, I always can contrast them with uh, a team like the San Francisco Shock, who, if they're up, they're just going to end it. And they, they have that killer instinct. I want to see that from Philadelphia to have that killer instinct to get out of maps, to, to get out of uh, sets, don't let a team back into it. Like, you you should be 3 0 Boston if you're the Philadelphia that everyone thinks that you are, right? And so I want to see that killer instinct out of them. I don't think it's going to be a map 5 kind of day given the first two maps that we saw. To be dead honest, Jaws, it's been an un it's been an unremarkable series. I'm going to be honest with the people. People expect honesty and integrity from me, of course. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, but our next map is going to be Blizzard World, and there is a substitution, Jack. Yes, there is. Hisu is taking a back seat for the time being. We're actually seeing Ivy coming in as the DPS. So let's have a look what changes Philadelphia actually want to do. Um, on this one. There you go. I was yeah. confused there because the graphics weren't around, but we're good now. Philadelphia Fusion on the defense first. I want to see a little bit of tall. <laughs> Gotta be real. Okay. Um, a little bit of tall, a little bit of tracer, maybe. I think you're going to see May. Ivy's been playing yeah. uh, a lot of May for this team. He's actually maybe one of the best Mays in the league. Well, not maybe. He is one of the best Mays in the league. Uh, he's always got perfect placements on the ability. He's able to hit the secondary fire headshots as well. And it, it's a it's a nice map to put up walls first if you're going to play uh, maybe an offense. We'll see it to cut people off. Right now, it does seem like they just want to run the double hit scan again, which is a little confusing because Hisu's Ash has been pretty god tier the last couple of times he played it. Yeah. Oh, man, no Torb. He's playing Ash. Oh man, no Torb. A sentence oh, I never man. thought I'd hear in 2020. But it's funny. Torb's a hilarious <laughs> character. He presses E and then runs at people with extra speed and armor and the free, uh, ferocity of Thor. Like, what more do you want from a hero? <laughs> you know what? You Not sold much. me. You sold me. Yeah, now there I'm bummed there's no Torb. Yeah, the, the head on oh. legs. The, the bobble head. Now of the Overwatch. <laughs> I've now created a few more Torb memes as well in the, <laughs> in the chat. Right, Kalex, starting off on the Widowmaker to see if anybody jumps high in the sky. Doesn't see any Widowmaker on the other team, so it's going to swap to Tracer. Miracle position once again. Yeah, so in the last time, Hisu kind of got the, the better of Jerry on the Ash duo, maybe. Ivy's just getting some playtime. Maybe Ivy just scrims in this map. There's really no rhyme or reason wow. to why Ivy is in this just yet. That was really cool. Did you see that? Fury, like, he saw the dynamite coming, so he pushed the shield up to bounce the dynamite even higher so he couldn't get an explosion. That was pretty neat. I like playing aggro once again, but you can see what we talked about earlier on. Carpe playing super defensive and uh, making sure Kalahex is in check most of the time. Rotation for Boston. This is how they won at the first point on Junkertown, was out rotating and outsmarting the option. See if the same could be said here, although it's a little bit of a harder map to do so as the Philadelphia Fusion are able to kind of hold this back stretch where their spawn is. It's going to yeah. be a slow slog. I, I love the style that Kirk is playing. It reminds me a little bit of uh, how Yaki had played a couple weeks ago. A frontline tracer, kind of playing the role of McCree, just denying the other tracer, cracking some shields. On defense, you don't have to be this giant playmaker in the back line. The onus is not on you, so Kirk is playing this really well. And I think the best tracers have all of these styles in their game. So very, very early window. Not really coupled with anything, but it sometimes you don't even need it to. Oh, headshot straight into the body shot. Silo goes down. Only one shield available now for Fusion. It's going to be a tough ask to get back onto this point. Bob is going to at least provide them a little bit of space, but with that on the field, we're going to be insecure with the Discord. 
Jerry trying to kick off the lava on the side, who is extremely low, but he's going to be able to get kept alive with the immortality field. Color Hex doing work in the background, though. He's like, oh, he does go down to Pulse Bob. Pulse Bob and the Bob going to finish off the rest of the fusion. Point's going to get capped, and Color Hex go to town. Okay, coming a bit alive here. Not quite as checked as he was before. Yeah, his creeps were pretty good, and that was the big question I had for this bossing team early on. But uh, Color Axe has been up to the task of playing this Tracer. But that first fight is just Sato peeking into the window. I mean, he peeks and just gets plunked away. There's almost no way to contest that point without Nerissa when the other team has one. You're just walking into it. The other team is, you can't even shoot at them. They're sitting behind a shield. You can try to crack it, but they're just shooting at you the entire time you're trying to crack it. So losing your Nerissa is a, a terrible first pick there. Sato maybe uh, just didn't have the confidence that Jerry was going to hit those shots. But if there's anything we've seen Jerry can do, it is straight up hit shots. Well, he's going to have to hit a few more before he gets bomb on Oh, these 1v1s are so sick. I love seeing Tracer back in the meta, man. It's so sick. Good Tracer players are uh, something to awe at. Right. Carpe throws out the pulse bomb. Won't find anything about that mortality field, but it's not a bad start. If Fury can press the Q button fast, they're not going to have anything to really deal with it apart from this transcendence, but can be cut off by the shields if Fury places it correctly. It does remind me of a uh, very old GOATS where... People like Sharik, who was in the league for Toronto the Fight last year, used to block the Transcendence with uh, the Ride Shield when we were grabbed. He was, very, he was very known for that in the EU Contenders, way back when I cast that. Three minutes to go for the Boston Uprising. They have uh, slowly taken this high ground now. Well, the Flux is going to come out. There's the Transcendence as planned. No one was out the field needed as they were just able to heal up off of it as there was no incoming damage or confusion. In fact, burning their own immortality field. Now there's a perfect time for Boston to unleash their fury as they do have that Bongo up on the high ground too. And look how much space they're being granted here by the fusion. Yeah, not able to get in. Oh, really oh, that killed Astro, of all people. I actually think that I'm pretty sure they landed on Sato's feet and Astro still ends up going down to it. Okay, good start. Now they only have a launch already. For life, the healing, they're going to have to use this transcendence early to keep them in the fight. But now Punk can just wait on this flux and bring everybody up in the air. They are trying to kind of stagger their ultimates at this point because the spawn is pretty close. But Alarm's able to win out on the fight on the high ground against two people, mind you. He's going for another one. Halo's going to fall with a 1v1. It was actually a 1v2 as Color tried to match Alarm, but he is way too beefy up there. The other boy ends up going down as well. That was almost a solo carry, by the way, by Alarm. Transcendencing and then winning a 2v1 on the high ground alone? Yeah, the Transcendence. It's not something you usually see every day. The Transcendence keeps him alive, and he lands up there. And just, I, I thought he was dead to rights. So I was like, oh, he's out in no man's land. That's the last place a Zen wants to be. But when you have aim like Alarm, I guess everything is just fine. We do go under two minutes now as the Boston Uprising will try to continue to push. It always hurts on hybrid maps to get stopped at second point. It's a long walk back until you can just fight. With under two minutes, you got to think you have two chances to push this one through and get an extension. Yeah, <laughs> it's treacherous though, heck. This spawn point on second is so horrible for the offense. You really need a quick and clean team. Like that. A lot of damage. They're trying to just get as much damage as they can through this window, but you see everybody was critical health there. Halo just can't beat them for the hills. Can really supplement the damage. There's the flux up in the air. Halo does have immortality field, I believe, or maybe not. Punk did go pretty low, but Carpe did win out the 1v1 in Color Hex, who was trying to go for this cheeky back cap. There's only five meters remaining before that card does hit the second point, so Fusion do have to be careful. Yeah, the backup would also accomplish getting people off of the high point if a team panics and don't just send one back. We saw Striker able to do something very similar yesterday for San Francisco uh, on this map, just getting the back half and pulling teams out of position. So you're not expecting to cap it, you're expecting to gain a position. Oh, the <laughs> no, the immortality field. Yeah, that's the tracer. Life sticky right bomb. Now. Yeah, it really is. It's like, I've, I've got stick, I've got sticky bomb, I'm just going to throw it in. Oh, bomb is nothing. And that's Bob's life as well. Oh, Bob over the wall. Did manage to land. It's on the stairs for cover, but hasn't got the greatest angle uh, in the world. But Jerry can at least kind of hug Bob. Use it as but cover. Given how it's gone today, Bob does need a hug. He does indeed. Oh, ideas of going down to Punk. Transcendence has been used rather aggressively for Boston Uprising to try and get himself on the payload. Now a big thank to the Fusion. Instant window with the Immortality field behind cover means they're not going to go down anytime soon. Overtime is going to be here very shortly as well. Up onto the high ground now is Funny Astro trying to take the 1v1 versus Jerry, but he's going to have to be a little bit careful. Flux onto the payload! And they don't touch! No, no. 
No, though. That looks so good, too. The Flux was in such a nice position. And they didn't have Immortality oh. Field. Transcendence had just been used prior to that. That's a, a, a point-winning Flux. Oh, and they fluxed it up. Jeez, man. <laughs> That one hurts. Well, like that's that's that something stings. that like it's, look. Sometimes you just get outmatched by a team, and they've got better players and their mechanics, and everyone's hitting shots. That's fine. Those are gonna happen. Those those you can live with. Those are the ones that I think hurt the most, where it's just comms, coordination, planning, a completely prevent. It's an unforced error, and it's hard to beat a team like Philadelphia even when you're playing perfectly. You can't have unforced errors like that. They were going to win that fight. I'm pretty certain they were going to win this fight. Oh, look at this. Flux up. It was perfect. Alarm still had the transcendence, so they weren't exactly going to die, but Alarm actually dashed out. And then, boom, there it is. Oh, Astro was touched the payload. Yeah. Oh, man, that sucks. Really unfortunate for Boston there. I mean, it was it was kind of funny because because they were in like the they had swap positions, the offense and defense where you traditionally imagine the offense would be in the defense. Philadelphia was on the cart, like looked like they were pushing. So, <laughs> oh, that was cute. I wasn't even certain you could do that. That's great. I, I'm glad I, I got something out of this match. Now I know you can sit in the sit in the roller coasters. <laughs> I'm teaching you ranked facts, and we're actually getting a whole lesson in how to mess around before <laughs> the game actually well, starts. I was actually going to bring it up. My ranked fact is, too, and this happened uh, maybe Sato taking out Astro. If you get stuck, stop moving. It comes on your screen true, for a reason that you got true. stuck. Stop moving. Take your hands true. off the keyboard if you must. But, yeah, it's, it's always hurts to take somebody with you. Uh, we've seen a couple of nice double pulse bombs today. Make it another same comps for both sides once more. Like, I do like seeing Ivy, but he's used Hanzo earlier, which is just absolutely nasty. We'll see where Colorhex wants to go here, and we'll see if how Carpe's gonna kind of match him or play the more defensive tracer. They're gonna have high ground advantage, at least for the time being, are the boss not rising. However, they're not really making use of it. It's a little bit more difficult when you have an Arissa against you if they're able to drop off quickly. Very early window, however, they got pulled from it. Oh, look at that damage from the dynamite through the window, straight onto a pretty. <laughs> Even Jerry going for this flank. Funny Astro bites the dust, and the rest of them are going to fall as well. Hell X taking a bit too much damage from Ivy there. One shot headshot for the Ash, of course, when you're scoped in against the Tracer, so Hell X doesn't really want to test it. Everything kills Tracer in one shot. A, a soft breeze kills Tracer yeah. in one shot. The, the one that feels the worst is an across map icicle, though. That one just oh. that one feels the worst. Or accidentally blinking into a Hanzo arrow. But that one's kind of on you. Just getting spammed with an icicle across the map, I think, is the worst feeling as a Tracer. Yeah. Oh, man. It's just... It's just there's there's no one in that situation that feels good. The May doesn't feel good because it was Oh, RNG. sure she does. No. And, uh, no, no. She, <laughs> May doesn't care. Come on. You know no, May players. Oh, there you go. Shots. There we go. Bang. Right in the head. Not bad. There's going to be a bomb available for Jerry now. Oh, use it over the wall. Oh. That would have been pretty swag. Oh, I think we even use the word swag anymore. I'm not sure they do. That was pretty swag. Double Alarm just managed to collect color heads in his face. Bob's going to be in the background. They are now fighting each other. But Bob from Philadelphia Fusion is going to win this one. It's got Transcendence right next to it. It's a lot of dynamite damage for Jerry once again. Transcendence now forced out for both sides. Who has Flux? Well, it's going to be Punk. Alarm's going to have to play very careful here. He doesn't want to get caught out by any means. Two minutes have gone and just disappeared for the fusion. And you're gonna need to make moves very slowly but surely. Maybe this is the push that they needed with Halo falling, but Honey Astro also goes down. And I said it there, Transcendence used fairly early for Alarm. Does mean Punk got a free flux. Fury ends up falling and no Metality Field at his back as well. Like a perfect storm for the Boston Uprising right now. It's a minute does remain the time the fusion actually gets into this engagement once again. Punk's having himself a great game. Punk should have been dead before that flux ever came up. He got stuck earlier, but it was an attempt at a stick. Punk actually ate it up, too. And so Punk should have been out of that fight. Carpe hit the stick on him, but it gets vacuumed up. It gets denied. And he's able to stay in that fight, get the flux, and get a couple of nice kills. As we mentioned, Boston's best team fight success rate comes with Punk in the lineup. They just need to win one fight here because it will be uh, a slow setup and a, a long stagger as well with these comps. So it's one fight territory for Fusion right now. They don't have much either. Maybe a supercharger around the corner. They do need a miracle. This could be the time for Boston Uprising to come back in the series though. I will say that, Hex. Jerry does have Bob. They've got the window tube. No one's definitely going to have uh, the ultimate as well. 
needs to kill on the immortality kill. Just mean Bob's gonna have a field day. Dynamite kills funny Astro. Now this basically done. Unless they manage to find a miracle pick and Fury's going for a flank and Jerry ends up going down. Astro, I mean a boss not racing, sorry, are and potentially just gonna win this off a full hold. Fusion need a miracle right now. Carpe is gonna have to come up big with something. Collex does end up going down and Jerry's on fire too. He's gonna get healed up. Freddy Astro goes back onto his rather famous Lucio to get back to the point in time. Alarm's gonna have to keep everybody alive with the Transcendence to try and keep this fight going. However, there's a lot of damage and even Ivy trying to flank, but not fighting a six. It's rather dangerous. Ivy's Bob does end up falling as well. Transcend is coming out from Myungbong. Perfect stick by Carpe it's though. Puck ends up falling. Myungbong's there as well. Oh, they needed a miracle and they definitely found it. Carpe coming up clutch once again as Ivy finishes up the fight as well. Fusion on the brink of defeat on the first point of Blizzard World. Managed to find the fight win and find the cap as well. Still winnable for Boston though. It's only two minutes and 30 seconds gets added to the time bank. Fantastic patience though. Carpe had that pulse bomb for a while and they were all clumped up and you think like, oh, just go in there, you'll probably get something. But it's it's gonna go to Carpe and everyone's gonna look at that as a Carpe highlight. That's a Sato highlight. He hit that hole perfectly. Carpe goes in there and nails it and that broke the door down for the Philadelphia Fusion. As you mentioned, two minutes here to get some push on the second point. Very easy victory condition, but it took them a long time and a miracle setup. Philadelphia with no check marks next to their name. And Funny Esther has to be a little bit better about holding on to this shift and dodging some of these dynamites. Right now, it looks like he's swiped right on dynamite because he has been attracted to it. Pretty good. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, it's all right. It's not my best. I'm not going to say it's my uh, routine. A lot of votes for Fury. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, boss not rising. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't either. <laughs> Although not a comedian myself. Uh, Kalex did throw the post bomb and didn't quite find anything. I think it found a shield more than anything, but they're able to set up on the high ground. Carpe, Carpe. Carpe's lurking. He's got his sneaky beaver, sh uh, sneaky beaver shoes on. He hasn't got a post bomb though, but they are just waiting for him to try and force out a... Uh, or just get one clip on the uh, Ash, that would be almost perfect. Bit of awkward movement there from Jerry. Didn't mean Carpe couldn't quite find the clean one clip. Carpe is moving back. Someone has to touch that. Otherwise, it's going to just regress in progress. There you go. Carpe's on it. Yeah, take the free push. They're giving it to you. The rest of the team can set up here. Tracer's not going to be up with the rest of the team. Not in this fight anyway. So, might as well just get, get as much free push as, as you can. Only 60 seconds left. Jerry's taking uh, quite a few pot shots by Ivy. He's just kind of sitting on the Scorpion tank. Still 45 seconds remaining. Look how far it's actually moving now. We're talking about it not moving at all, and you can hear that music coming in. Carpe Kalex with a 1v1 duel on the payload, but Carpe's getting perma pocketed. Same with Kalex, to be fair. He has got uh, the Harmony Orb on on top of it. And now Jerry's on the high ground with a perfect position for Dynamite and the Bob. For the Delphi Fusion, though, they are moving through this small choke point in the middle. And they've got to be careful once again. We have seen a lot of Bobs do a lot of work. As soon as that immortality field goes down, you want to send that Bob in. Philadelphia so can just pressure out the back. They're going to be patient here because they're, they're about to get a ton of bolts online. Carpe throws in the pulse one, doesn't quite find anything. And what Tatsy Field going down does signal the go button for the Philadelphia Fusion. It's about 15 seconds before that comes back online again. The window's definitely going to pay dividends for them. Transcendence is even available for Alarm. They've got so much, but Ivy ends up going down to the Bob somehow. He wasn't in the Transcendence, but Funny Astro through the window. He does manage to find one, two, and three kills for the Baptiste. Carpe finished off Punk. And would you look at that hex? They all kick you at once. Bob wasn't even needed. And the Philadelphia Fusion will clean sweep the series. Three to zero. There was some great patience displayed by the Philadelphia Fusion squad today. It started a little bit on Junker Town too, where they're just trying to take fights regardless of the point. That very last fight, everyone was about 70, 80% towards ultimate. And maybe some inexperienced teams, and maybe teams that you've been on would run in at 20 seconds, but there's no need. It's your last fight. It doesn't matter if you fight with 20 seconds or two. They chose to sit back a little bit. The immortality field came off onto the uh, flux and they weren't sure that that was going to be enough. So they popped transcendence, the window comes through and and yeah, better soldier being the Baptiste just takes down three. Funny Astro had himself a hell of a game. This back line for Philadelphia, we said even before the season started, it's like this revamp back line could put Philadelphia to the next level. Like they, we know what their DPS can do, but that back line's going to help their tank line a lot. Sato was much maligned before this season. My like comeback player of the year right now. And he's been playing more confident and it's because that back line, Alarm is fragging. Uh, funny Astro's keeping people alive, then he goes off himself. But yeah, I mean, this Philadelphia team is a complete squad, Jack.
Well, the funny, funniest thing was we gave the alarm stats for Baptiste earlier on today, yeah. and now we're seeing obviously Funny Astro just pop off on it. So it's very, it's very clear how good not only the hero is, but uh, how well rounded the support line is too. Alarms uh, Zenyatta is definitely nothing to scoff at. Definitely one of the best in the world. It's coming up to not Jonak level just yet, but Alarm pretty damn clean. Definitely a rookie to look out for, and he kind of always was, to be fair. Player of the match, though, is going to be Carpe. Was 1v2ing Tracer in the back line. Surprise, surprise. And uh, player of the match for his BM as well in chat, as always. <laughs> Just spamming Z9. It doesn't matter if it's a C9 or not. Carpe is spamming C9 every single time. Yeah, I thought his best map was actually on Busan, and it wasn't even getting kills. It was really early on. I think it was the second stage where he was taking 1v2s and denying the capture, denying the pressure. When you're rotating as Boston onto the point, you're expecting that like either you're going to win that fight of whoever comes with 2v1, or you're going to pull a lot of people out of position and then put uh, Jerry in a good spot to clean up and take that angle because Philadelphia was hiding the room. Carpe goes down to the point. Deals with the 1v2, almost actually wins the 1v2 against the opposing Tracer, but he buys enough time for his team to come in, and, and he was taking those all the time. A lot of times on Tracer, everyone's like, oh, he hit this pulse bomb, what a flashy one clip. There's a lot you can do to force a team into bad positions, to take away the option of their positioning, and Carpe did that phenomenally today. Like I said, the best Tracers in the world have all of these things in their kit. Play defensive, play offensive, hit your pulse bomb, take 1v2s, uh, force the team out of position. Carpe has it all. It's the same Philadelphia player of the match conundrum we're in every week. Pick one. I, I don't care. Pick one. It's fine. Pick one of them. Yep. Every single one of them play pretty well. Well, with that, of course, we uh, did touch on the Summer Showdown qualifiers. It's Philadelphia potential redemption arc coming into the, uh, the into the Summer Showdown. They're inching themselves up and up and up, wanting to guarantee themselves the first seed. And they have, again, not dropped a map. So they are looking rather healthy coming into the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and one of the teams that they're very likely going to have to face off is coming up next in the Florida Mayhem versus Los Angeles Valiant. That should end up being a good match. But Philadelphia, I believe right now in the standings, is the only team with two victories so far, undefeated. And look, their regular season uh, record is 14-1. and one. This is a team that only lost to Paris once, and it was, uh, I believe, five mapper. It might have went to six. It was the last day we were in studio. I remember because I predicted the Paris upset. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a team that everyone expects to do very well and go further in tournaments. They need to take a little bit of a next step to be able to fight a team like San Francisco, who I think is right now the cream of the crop in uh, the NA division. And then you've got teams like Florida who are battling to take that Philadelphia spot. So it's important for them to get a good seating and not have to, uh, you know, kind of work your way through the weekend. Rather, you'd rather just play the good teams when you get to the, the bracket. Yeah, I'm very excited uh, to see Florida play again. Going to be real. Just uh, them up against the Valiant, another team that's really on the up and coming. Um, a lot, I think a lot of people had them middle to bottom in their power rankings, potentially a little bit higher. Yeah. But um, it's been really nice to see uh, the Valiant turn around. Maybe it's the dropping of Custer. I don't know, dude. Maybe. Very maybe likely. Yeah, I mean, it, very likely. It doesn't hurt. I'll tell you that much. But uh, it, this is also a, a dominant damage dealer meta. And I think uh, there's a lot of great players on, on the Valiant squad. I've been really impressed with their support line, uh, most importantly. But we know how good the damage dealers for the Los Angeles Valiant can be. So that that's going to be an amazing match to watch because we've seen it. Like, if, if a Tracer just has a top tier performance, they can carry a team, unless you're the Dallas Fuel. However, oh, God, I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. Sorry, Dallas. Um, like, I think this could be a really close match. I want to see Yaki and I want to see everything go. This, this match was kind of what we expected. We were hoping that Boston would maybe put on a little better performance, put up a fight. And it wasn't all as one-sided as Busan was because that was completely one-sided. Boston had moments. They have things to build on. I think the additions for the roster have played well. I think Punk is someone you can look at to build around. Also, I think their support line is just fine how it is. Uh, but the support lines are never going to stand out when you're losing matches. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. So Boston, it's not all bad news. They're looking up. They're looking better. The roster is improving. But you're playing against Philadelphia. Philadelphia is one of the top teams in the league. These matches are going to happen. Yeah, it's from strength to strength for Philadelphia Fusion, I think. And uh, we'll look forward to them going into the uh, Summer Showdown. I think we've got an interview, though, with a fellow three-head, Funny Astro. We'll jump over to Zoe, and um, she can break that down. I'm with she, I mean I. So I have no idea why I talk to myself in the third person. Either way, I do have Funny Astro joining me. So thank you so much for uh, coming on to the show. And of course, big congratulations on that W. Thank you. 
let's let's dissect the game we saw. I mean, you ended it with a with a complete banger there. Uh, I, I'm 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 still all. I don't know, giddy about watching what just uh, transpired on that map. You guys clutched it out with Carpe on that A point, and then you, in the end, did push that payload through. But um, it was close, maybe a little closer than some people would have expected. Is that credit due to Poston Uprising's uh, most recent, you know, um, surge upwards? Or do you feel like you guys maybe have been playing a little bit more loose? Uh, I think Boston has got a bit better, but. Even though it was close, of course, we still won 3-0, and we won 3-0 last week as well. Alright, so it doesn't worry you that you could have potentially been full held there? Or... Uh, it doesn't worry me at all. We're, we're always okay. close <laughs> to losing, but we, we never lose, so... Is that is that like a play style? Is that just a Philly style now? Can yeah, you... I, I guess getting close to losing and then clutching out is kind of our style. I like, I mean, it keeps things exciting. Right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, let's go with that then. Uh, speaking of losing, though, you guys did go out in the May Melee against the Mayhem in the semi-finals. Um, what were your biggest takeaways uh, from the May Melee in general? And uh, how do you think you're going to, you know, take what you learned during that tournament uh, into the Summer Showdown? I think it kind of just reminded everyone on our team that we all really hate losing. So <laughs> since we lost, Good everyone's reminder. been... Yeah, we've, everyone's been working super hard and playing loads of ranked, uh, really trying to fix all the problems we had, and it looks like we're on the up and up from here, so should be able to win this tournament. What kind of problems did you guys actually point out at the end of that tournament? Uh, it was nothing in particular, we just didn't play so well, of course, uh, <laughs> and we've definitely fixed a lot of the issues we had. Uh, so now heading into the summer showdown, uh, we won't have the hero pools in place. Um, how do you think that's going to change uh, the performance of certain teams? Do you feel like there are certain teams which will rise up as the underdog? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think uh, hero pools being out changes much. I think we're still going to be a top team and looking to win the tournament. I think Shock, of course, are going to be really good and Mayhem maybe as well. Okay, so is, is that uh, the final we all wanted last uh, last uh, match? Is, is that going to happen this this time around? Will we see the shock going up against Philly? Yeah, I, I hope so. I hope we can get to beat them in the final. All right, well, that definitely will be the dream match come true for everyone watching. So I hope that's what we're going to get. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thanks for having me. And we're now heading into a very quick break. And afterwards, we are back with the LA Valiant who will be taking on the Florida Mayhem. Stay tuned. <laughs> 